hey what's up everyone welcome back to another video i hope everybody is doing well um so the year just started and i recently stumbled across an article online showcasing and talking about five potential new cameras that we could see released from sony as early as this year as a sony user and a camera nerd this was super exciting to me and i obviously wanted to hop out here and share it with you guys to see what you guys' thoughts and opinions were and uh, just have somebody to talk to about it i do want to preface before we get into this list that these are all just rumors, like I mentioned earlier. None of these are guaranteed. None of these have been confirmed. Um, so unfortunately, we can't be fully relying on any of these to come out this year. But as you'll see when we get into the list and we start talking about a couple of them, I feel like there's a good bit of credibility behind a few that could be hopefully signs that we'll be seeing some new gear coming out very soon. Let's get into it. Okay, so for all these cameras, I'm gonna be sure to list the article or the website that I got it from in the description down below so you guys can check it out uh, and do some more digging and research if you want to on your own. Uh, but kicking off our list first, we have the A9 III. So this is one that I know a lot of sports photographers and wedding photographers and basically any shooter that relies on a high FPS is gonna be super excited about. So the rumored specifications are as followed. We see a potential 24.5 megapixel, megapixel sensor, 30 frames per second shooting, um, ISO range of 50 to 204 K, um, 693 point phase auto detection system, Bion's XR AI processing unit, uh, AI based real time tracking autofocus system, eight stop five axis image stabilization, 9.44 EVF with 120 frames per second refresh rate. So if all of this is true, this could be a decent improvement for Sony A9 users and fans. The main things that stood out to me was that there's a slight bump in megapixels on the sensor, but in my opinion, that's not really anything substantial. I think it might be nice for fans or users of this camera to see something a little bit more substantial, like a 30 megapixel sensor or even like a 26 megapixel sensor, um, just something that's a little bit higher. There is a potential bump in the FPS from 20 to 30 frames per second, which would probably be the most appreciated or useful function in my opinion, considering the type of work that this camera is geared towards. Also an improved EVF from 3.68 to 9.44. Uh, that'd be a nice noticeable jump in details for the viewfinder. So yeah, I mean, all in all, not a huge improvement if all of these specs rumored are confirmed. I guess it'd be something that if you're jumping into the A9 crew or maybe if you need a second A9, this might be a nice option depending on that. But A9 users, feel free to chime in, talk to me a little bit. How do you guys feel about these potential specs? Give some input. Okay, number two on our list is the A7000. Um, or as the article states, an A6600 successor. Uh, this is definitely one that I could potentially see on the horizon. If you check out online, you can see that the A6600 got released November 19th, 2019. So there's plenty of time between now and present day uh, for Sony to have been working on whatever is next in this series. Um, as far as specs go, the slight bump in megapixels are staying the same. I'm sure people will be thrilled to see a 4K60 uncropped. Um, because I don't know about you, but I've already had to deal with this and having to work around, you know, cropping in, cropping out, kind of maybe swapping lenses to fit that crop or whatever it may be. It's just not my cup of tea when I'm out shooting and stuff. I like to just have fun and capture what I want to capture instead of worrying about those details. The addition of Cinetone and 422 10-bit internal and an upgraded EVF would also make this camera a bit more competitive for certain lines of professional work. When I first started shooting, my first jump to Sony cameras was actually the A6500. And then before the A6500, there's been several other lines as well, like the A6000, the A5100. Um, basically, it just keeps going back a pretty long way. Seeing as it's a perfect option to target entry level pros, vloggers, uh, everyday recreational users and all that stuff. I don't feel like Sony would look into discontinuing this line anytime soon. Only comment that I have is that typically for this line of cameras, we're used to seeing a smaller body and not the bigger full frame body look to it. Um, personally, I like that. I like the smaller compact form factor um, for these cameras and everything that they offer. Uh, if I was going to be considering getting one, which is a strong possibility that I might, that would definitely be something that I would be factoring in with that. Coming in at number three, we've got an A6400 successor, which honestly, in my opinion, is to be expected if you're gonna be doing a projection for the A6600 successor as well. 
Um, these two typically release side by side, so there's always like a choice A and a choice B type option going on. How it typically goes is one of them usually has a slight bump in internal features, which makes it a better choice for more serious shooters. The other one usually is without these other features, which makes it a better general choice. This also, of course, comes with a difference in price, with the beefier unit being more expensive and the regular unit being the more budget-friendly option. Coming back to our two speculated cameras, the stats seem pretty plausible, in my opinion. You've got basically an identical camera missing a few bells and whistles that help with the icing on the cake. I honestly don't know how well an A6400 successor would perform in this market currently, especially with cameras like the Sony ZV-E10 out and already crushing it in the space that a 6400 would usually live in. So yeah, I'd be curious to know anybody's thoughts about this in the comments below. A7C2. Now, this is one that I would be super excited to see. I've been looking for the perfect camera to fit all of my vlogging and everyday needs. The problem is, is that the A7C already came out like two to three years ago. So I just have this feeling, this hunch, that as soon as I go out and buy one, as soon as I'm ready to pull the trigger, they're gonna release the new A7C2 or a Sony ZV-E10 II or something like that that's gonna fill that slot and be that camera that I'm waiting on. Specs-wise for the Sony A7C2, this would check so many boxes for me. Big bump in megapixels from 24 to 33, uh, improved EVF, 4K60 recording with s -Cinetone. Um, I don't see uncropped on there, so Sony don't ruin this dream for me and throw a cropped 4K factor into there at all. Just give us the full frame, please. Articulating screen, compact body, it's just a yes for me. Give me the A7C2, drop it to me right now. I'm ready for my small miniature A7 IV of a beast. Give it, please. Speaking of the Sony ZV-E10, um, it is a super popular camera, and trust me, I've thought about grabbing one of those as well. The only reason that I haven't gone for that is because of two main factors that are mainly my own personal wants. Um, one being a viewfinder or an EBF, and the other one being the battery. I'm a hybrid shooter, which means I like shooting both photos and videos whenever I'm doing projects. Um, and having a viewfinder is something that I've never really been without, so I'm pretty attached to it. The other part of it is, with battery life, um, I noticed when I was doing some research on the Sony ZV-E10 when it first came out, that it uses the old batteries that the A6500 and 6300 use. So the A7C, the A7 III, which was one of my first full-frame cameras, the A7S III, which I currently use right now, all of those cameras use Sony's Z batteries, which are so much stronger when it comes to power. Um, I could probably get away with two Z batteries to last for the length of about, I'd say, five or six of the other smaller batteries for the current Sony ZV-E10. Okay, number five on our list would be the Sony A7S IV. And again, this would be something that I would be super excited to see. Potential specs for the Sony A7S IV include the following, a 24.2 megapixel full frame sensor, AI processing unit, dual gain ISO and time code supporting, internal UHD 4K 60 and 1080p 240 recording, S-Log4, five axis steady shot inside stabilization, 3.68 mil dot EVF with the 120 frames per second refresh rate to 10 frames per second of shooting with the ISO range as listed, built-in Wi-Fi with the NFC, and the dual SD slot card readers. Standout features for me, a sensor that bumps up to support 24.2 megapixels would be lovely in my opinion. This isn't a photo-centric camera, so 12 megapixels is like just enough room to play with. But having that 24 megapixels would be everything we needed more in a video-centric camera. So please throw that in there for us, Sony. Also, the dual gain ISO. That's something that is super useful. I already thought this was in the A7S III, um, but I guess it's not. I did some research and it's not there. Literally going from having grainy, 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 and then as soon as you hit that next native ISO, it just snaps back to a perfectly clean image is astounding, to be honest, and it gives you so much flexibility when you're out shooting. So it'd be super nice to see that as well. Lastly would be S-Log4. Um, I don't typically use too much S-Log. I've done S-Log2, S-Log3, and I've shot a little bit of D-Log for when I'm shooting with my Ronin, but I think it would be interesting to see a new gamma uh, and a color space available for us to play around in and see how that turns out. So there you have it, guys. That is five cameras that could potentially come out in 2023 from Sony this year. Again, while a lot of them do seem pretty convincing, unfortunately, none of these are guaranteed. So it's all just camera talk, rumors, speculation, all that fun stuff. That being said, if you could pick one camera from this list to see in 2023, what would be your number one choice? For me personally, I'm stuck between the A7C2 and the A7S4, honestly. 
It's a tie. I don't know which one to pick. I'd have to flip a coin for it. Uh, but let me know what you think in the comments below. I would love to hear what everybody's preferred camera would be. And maybe, just maybe, Sony might be nice and bless us with at least one of them. As always, I hope you were able to gain some value from this, whether it's entertainment, education, inspiration, whatever it may be. If you enjoyed the video, please like, comment, and subscribe to support the channel and keep more videos like this coming your way. Uh, but thanks again for watching, guys, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.